In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate yet equally important groups, the police who investigate crime and the district attorneys who prosecute the offenders. These are their stories. Minister calls the Christian Council's position on oil premature. It's way, it way, way premature in terms of that. Another oil spill in Grand Bahama. The Suicide Task Force reporting an increase in Bahamian suicidal thoughts. Because once they're traumatized, they lose their vision of the future. Plus, the Boys Brigade needs your help finding a home. Come in and help us erect this building. I'm Nikia Debo, and this is NB12 Weekend. everyone, thanks for joining us this Saturday for NB12 Weekend. Prime Minister Perry Christie responding to the Bahamas Christian Council who delivered a scathing criticism of Bahamas Petroleum Company and its plans to drill for oil in Bahamian waters. Christie said the BCC jumped the gun with its comments. I don't want to disrespect um, the spokesperson and, and whatnot, but um, they, they communicate um, with a, um, in a different way, I suppose, than I do in matters of this kind. And um, maybe one day they'll come and tell me um, why they think um, they should reach this stage where they're talking about sharing monies on the basis of an industry that doesn't exist. BPC believes there are likely around 9 billion barrels of oil underneath the ocean floor where it has leases to drill. The corporation has a sliding scale agreement with the government under which it would pay out anywhere from 12.5% to 25% of profits depending on how much oil is extracted each day. Earlier this week, Christian Council Economic Committee Chairman Reverend Patrick Paul called the arrangement categorically unjust, injurious and unfair to the democracy of the nation and added that it would not benefit Bahamians directly. The council says the only condition under which it would support BPC drilling for oil would be if an additional 25% of the profits derived from oil drilling are paid into a national sovereign trust fund that would be separate from the government's royalties. Before you reach that point, you have to, first of all, we're going to have to put laws in place. Um, the country will know what happens with countries all over the world. What do you do? What's, what, what is the sharing? between state or government and the oil people who are doing it, whether in the United States of America, whether in England, wherever they are in the world, um, we will have a, to examine that and see what in fact are the practices in the profession. According to Paul, the fund would also be required to pay a $100,000 dividend to each household in the Bahamas each year. Here's what the Prime Minister had to say about that. If you have oil of the kind of Saudi Arabia, where you could give 100000 to every Bahamian. I mean, you know. BPC spent the last four months courting local church leaders in an effort to educate Bahamians on oil drilling. Christie said right now there is no official deal and nobody knows if there is any oil. It takes, I'm told, about three, four hundred million dollars to dig a well at any depth. And um, these people take the risk of that. And so any, any deal would depend on that kind of cost that they have to incur. BPC has reportedly invested more than $50 million into its preparations to date, the majority of it on 3D seismic testing or mapping. The Ministry of Transport and Aviation investigating the third Borco oil spill in Grand Bahama this year. The company reported the spill in waters in the area of Pinders Point Freeport around 6 yesterday evening. The port department responded immediately and discovered what appeared to be a small quantity of oil covering an area of about 70 feet on rocks at a breakwater in the area of Borco's pipelines that connect with a jetty. That's the same area of the last sighting of oil in February. The affected area was secured, the remaining oil will be retrieved and the rocks will be cleaned. Divers are expected to investigate the source of the leak next Tuesday. 
The ministry says it is very concerned about yet another oil spill and is reportedly reviewing Borco's emergency management plan, which was submitted following last month's incident. In January, 210 gallons of diesel fuel overflowed in waters off Grand Bahama while a ship was being refueled at Borco. The government is hoping to meet with the company's senior officials soon. Well, 17 Cubans were apprehended by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force yesterday. Reports are that an RBDF vessel was in the vicinity of Key Lobos when Marines spotted several people on the key in the southwestern Bahamas, just inside our border with Cuba. A search of the island was conducted and 14 Cuban men and 3 Cuban women were apprehended. It is believed they came here by boat. The Defense Force brought those migrants to the capital along with a vessel today. We'll have more on this story in tomorrow night's newscast. Well, following the attempted suicides of two teenage boys this week, internationally renowned Bahamian psychiatrist Dr. David Allen said the growing number of suicides and attempted suicides in young people in recent years is concerning. Celeste Nixon has more in this report. According to Dr. Allen, children and young adults attempting suicide is a new issue in the Bahamas. Our young people <clears throat> are considering death as an option. That to me is a kind of new issue, mm -hmm. but some things which concern us, even though I don't know the direct details of these two attempts, mm -hmm. but it worries us because remember that suicide is a process, mm -hmm. but many times it's reported in the media as an event. What we're trying to do in the task force is to look at what's the process of suicide. Why are people in our country starting to feel such a state of hopelessness that they want to die? The government recently appointed a task force headed by psychiatrist Dr. Allen and a committee of 15 people to review and address the causes behind a number of suicides being committed in the Bahamas. Dr. Allen said he believes there also might be a connection with the high murder rate and instances of suicide, particularly in young people. Every time there's a murder and the children are around, those kids get traumatized. So my fear is that the traumatization as a result of the violence or the homicides is now coming home to roost in some of our kids. Because once they're traumatized, they lose their vision of the future. Dr. Allen said substance abuse and the fragmentation of society, which has stemmed from the breakdown of the family, has increased the murder rate, violent crimes and suicides. While the suicide trends are still being identified, Dr. Allen said there is an increase in Bahamians' willingness to talk openly about wanting to die. We have, don't have the trends yet. What we do know from our um, um, family uh, helping people program, mm -hmm. that people are more open to talking about their willingness to die. Mm -hmm and also more open about talking about their willingness to kill others. In fact, you come to our meetings on Wednesday, like last Wednesday, about 25% yes. of people talk about outing somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So remember, homicide and suicide go from the same shame force. Mm -hmm. So my point is that somehow something is hurting deeply in our psyche, mm -hmm. and that hurt produces shame, and shame is impacted hurt. When the shame gets to a certain point, it produces murderous rage, which can go against us, the self, or against somebody else. Dr. Allen said his committee will examine suicides over the past three to five years to determine any trends and causes. Dr. Allen said the committee is expected to submit its report to the government by May 1st, which will hopefully lay the foundation for an intervention program. Reporting for MB12, I'm Celeste Nixon. As the government seeks to borrow another $100 million this fiscal year, former central bank governor Julian Francis is suggesting that there be a cap put on the amount governments can borrow during their term in office. The suggestion was made to the Constitutional Reform Committee that continues to hear submissions from civic leaders on what changes should be made to the Constitution before the referendum later this year. Paige McCartney reports. Despite government promises to return budget to a surplus by the end of its five-year term, Francis says government borrowing has reached critical levels and Bahamians should be very concerned about public debt. Last month, the government announced it would seek authorization from Parliament to borrow an additional $100 million in the current fiscal year to cover unpaid financial commitments incurred during the Ingram administration. This will add to the $550 million the government already got approval to borrow for this fiscal year. But it's this kind of practice that Francis believes should be stopped, suggesting to the Constitutional Reform Commission that governments only should be allowed to spend what they earn. We believe that serious 
consideration must be given by your commission to limiting the ability of a government to spend to revenues it has raised during the term of its mandate. That's only an example of one of the big problems which we face. For example, Francis said if the government believes it can exceed budgeted revenue by 10 or 15 percent during its five-year term, then it can borrow based on what is forecast to generate before leaving office. Francis said this is an urgent issue that needs careful consideration by the Commission. Members of the Commission, there is abundant evidence of the disadvantage and harm visited on the Bahamas over these past 40 years as a result of the above defects in our governance arrangements. Francis added that his recommendation is derived from a need to make the government accountable and hold it to some constraints. We Bahamians have to assume full responsibility for having failed until now to take any serious action to change these arrangements and thereby to address this crippling handicap to the achievement of our national aspirations. We contend that if this constitutional review is to have any relevance, it must address these issues. The government has recently asked public corporations and agencies to reduce their reliance on subventions by 10 percent in the 2013-2014 fiscal year and by 25 percent in the 2014-2015 fiscal year. On the capital side, the government is looking for a medium-term target of 3 percent of GDP or annual investments of $250 million. For MB12, I'm Paige McCartney.